Ah, what's happening, guys? Elton here. Well, we meet again, 79 Pontiac Parisienne with the old-school Montreal Montréal plate. My God, I used to see this car all the time when I was on Henri Bourassa near La Jeunesse. And I wondered about this car the last time I was there, I don't know, one, a month ago or whatever. I was like, what happened to that Parisienne? Remember the last time I saw it a few years ago, it had a little bit of rust on the other side. It was starting to build up and... Hey, listen, the old man who had this, he was driving this thing daily. I even filmed it leaving a gas station on that corner in the snow. It was snowing and everything, like, you know. And nobody has the balls to do that anymore, really. It's uh, it's just so detrimental to these cars. They rust so easily. And I remember I took, I remember even taking a picture the first time I saw it on Ari Barossa in 2004 because I have this slide photos original to remind me of that. Well, let's get rid of this stupid crap right here crying out loud ah! <laughs> disrespectful anyway but uh, originally when i first saw this car and we're going back like almost 20 years ago uh she had the original navy blue paint and uh, i got nick here with me it's all thanks to him for seeing this car and uh i just told him i was like man to see this beauty again with the original caps the fender skirts uh i would buy this kind of car this is what i would buy in a heartbeat and what's interesting, too, is that at the time... Oh, yeah, by the way, there's just some sort of a major police intervention going on over there. No big deal. Nothing to see. Just, you know. They're just telling the street. Yeah. And, uh, but you had a wide variety of engines for these cars at that time because people were all, like, fuel conscious, right? So you had your base engine, which would have been the, uh, the 231 V6, which, of course, was underpowered. For these cars for fuel economy then after that you had the 260 i think uh 267 and then you had the 305 and then you had the 350. yeah you see sorry it gets out of focus here because it's well because it's too dark and it's just like any camera if you're in the dark it's not gonna be in focus you know and i'm like i hesitated filming this thing again uh, because I've already filmed it, but what the hell? Why not? I, like I told Nick, it's not like I'm, yeah. not like we're in California here in Florida where there's old cars all over the place. So why, like, why not? You know? Maybe this car won't be here again. Exactly, like he said, maybe this car won't be here again. I mean, Jesus, you know. Uh, I remember filming this car too. It was years ago in Laval. I was on a bike ride. Yeah, look at that. There's a little bit of, there's a dent there, which is funny because when I had a '78 Caprice. The top part of it was light blue. The other part was the same blue color and it had a dent in the same bloody place. Imagine that. But again, you know, cars like this, they are so they were sold so well. And Nick, in case you didn't hear me mention yeah. before, like for here in Canada, by the way, I mean, you could have bought a Caprice, right? Which would have been uh, in the States uh, the, almost the equivalent. But the, the, the Bonneville, which was the equivalent of this, Bonneville was more expensive. But here in Canada, a Parisienne was on par in price with the Caprice. So Pontiac sold a ton of Parisiennes here in Canada because people thought they were more stylish. They a little bit more of a sporty look to them. So yeah, it's just great to see. It's just a nice, you know, for me and a lot of people, uh, Canadian classic. What the hell is that? Duct tape. Oh yeah, duct tape. Yeah. Man's best friend, duct tape. So there you go. A little evening car spotting there. We came here to, to see a Caprice and we see this Parisienne instead. So and I'll see if I can finish with a with a nice uh, side shot there. There you go. Don't go out of focus. Come on now. What happens if I put on the flash? Eh, not a big difference, eh? Anyway, thanks for watching. Well, I gotta say, this guy doesn't happen too often. Here I am back on uh, whatever street this is in Montreal North. Uh, I filmed uh, an elevator in this old building. And uh, I came back actually because there's a couple old cars over there. I want to see if I can uh, document those as well as I figured, well, you know, I don't live, it's not like I live in the western part of the city. I already live in the east end. I'll just come back and uh, film those in the daytime because filming as dark, in the dark, as you've seen with this guy, is nice, but uh, doesn't come out too sharp, you know, because you got to have a tripod because it's very low lighting. So happy to film this guy, uh, which, by the way, allows me to correct what I mentioned. This is not the same Pontiac Parisienne that I saw as a winter driver that I filmed driving in the winter uh, years ago because I found that video. For one thing, the repaint is more of a modern metallic blue. Secondly, the guy, I don't know where he found this. He, he had this like white trim, like plastic trim to replace here. Same hubcaps, white wall tires. No, it didn't have white wall tires. But actually it's funny, it looks like this one's been sitting out a long time. It's got all that surface rust, unfortunately, on the roof. 
but uh, if I didn't mention it, these are great cars. I mean, you know, it's funny because when they restyled these slightly along with all the other full-size uh, GMs there, uh, G-bodies or whatever the hell they're called, B-bodies, Delta 88s, Caprice and Pala, etc. They were actually, the 80 to 80, uh, the 80 to 86 Pontiac Parisienne was actually even better made than these because the problem with these along with the Delta is like 77 to 79 is they rust they rust terribly even the rear bumpers rust terribly and by the way those bumper guards those were extra cost items i didn't mention that in my last video with uh with my friend you know what i'm saying so anyway and uh, of course uh it goes without saying this is exactly if i could drive legally if it wasn't for my shitty eyes this is exactly what i would get behind the wheels at i've had a 78 caprice i had all my friends drive it practically at the time and uh yeah, they're just great, dependable cars. You can't go wrong with them. It's, the engines, again, are bulletproof. Transmissions are bulletproof. But again, what does what did all these cars away? It's rust. And the frames. Once the frames rust as well, especially, that's it. It's pretty much game over. Because uh, if, if the frame is rotted, the, co the car is no longer solid. And therefore, it's a, it's a safety hazard. So now I'm going to go see if those other two cars... Oh, yeah, and by the way, like I mentioned, that first clip there you saw at night... That's just a classic Montreal plate. And it's actually really funny to see that because I was thinking about that maybe like a day earlier or two days earlier thinking, you know what, I like to do a painting of an old car, some 70s beater like this, with that plate. Pontiac. Look, you see what I mean? Look at the rust out here. Look at that. These freaking bumpers, especially from the rear. I don't know why the rear one's not rusted, but they rust from the inside for crying out loud. Terrible. Ted Ib. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, the fact that I've seen that I filmed at least two of these, it goes to show, and they're very similar, it goes to show you how how many of these they sold here in Canada. They probably sold more of these, I'm sure, than Caprices. So uh, that's it. That's all. Uh, take care now, y'all. Bye bye.